Hi, you are welcome on the continuity channel. Today I will discuss about the some other important points related to the centrifugal pump. Like cavitation, net positive suction head, pump characteristic curve, lubrication, disassembly and assembly of pump and its starting. Let's start. At first I shall tell you about the cavitation. During suction, when the local pressure at the impeller eye becomes lower than the vapor pressure, mean saturation pressure, of the flowing liquid, then the formation of the bubbles start. The bubbles formed at the impeller eye are swept along the impeller veins with the flow of the fluid. When the bubbles enter a region where local pressure is greater than saturation pressure, the vapor bubbles abruptly collapse. This process of the formation and subsequent collapse of vapor bubbles in a pump is called cavitation. There are various regions of cavitation, like wrong NPSH, pinhole or any air leak on suction line, starvation of pump, Low velocity of liquid in the suction eye. Now, effect of cavitation. There are following effect of cavitation. Like, cavitation degrades the performance of a pump by fluctuating flow rate and discharge pressure. Wear of casing, impeller, veins, takes place due to pitting action of the liquid bubbles. Cavitation can also cause excessive pump vibration which could damage pump bearings, wearing rings, and seals. There are following indications that a centrifugal pump is cavitating. Like, noise, fluctuating discharge pressure and flow, fluctuating pump motor current. Cavitation is very dangerous for the pump. So I have to stop this. There are some steps that can be taken to stop pump cavitation. Like increase the pressure at the suction of the pump. Reduce the temperature of the liquid being pumped. Reduce head losses in the pump suction piping. Reduce the flow rate through the pump. Reduce the speed of the pump impeller. Now, I tell you about the NPSH means net positive suction head. To avoid cavitation in centrifugal pumps, the pressure of the liquid at all points within the pump must remain above vapor pressure. NPSH determine the suction pressure of the liquid being pumped. To avoid cavitation. Now, there are two terms. First NPSH A means net positive suction head available and second NPSH R means net positive suction head required. Let's discuss it one by one. At first NPSH A. The net positive suction head available is the difference between the pressure at the suction of the pump and the vapor pressure for the liquid being pumped. And the net positive suction head required is the minimum net positive suction head necessary to avoid cavitation. It is specified by the vendor, manufacturer. The condition that must exist to avoid cavitation is that the net positive suction head available must be greater than or equal to the net positive suction head required. Look at here. A formula for NPSHA can be written as the following equation. Net positive suction head available is equal to the difference between the pressure at the suction and the vapor pressure of the liquid being pumped. Look at this figure. Liquid may come from the storage situated above the pump or from storage situated below the pump. If the liquid comes from the storage situated above the pump then the pressure at the suction is measured in the positive head. And when the liquid comes from the storage situated below the pump then it measured in the negative head. Look at here, net positive suction head available is also written in the form of as given. Now, centrifugal pump characteristic curve. A curve drawn between the pump flow rate and the pressure head is called pump characteristic curve. There are two terms, which I have to know at first. Shut off head and pump run out. Shut off head is the maximum head that can be developed by a centrifugal pump operating at a set speed. And pump run out. 
pump run out is the maximum flow that can be developed by a centrifugal pump without damaging the pump. Centrifugal pumps must be designed and operated to protect the conditions of pump run out or operating at shut off head. Pump run out can lead to cavitation and can also cause overheating of the pump's motor due to excessive currents. Look at the diagram. The greater the head against which a centrifugal pump operates, the lower the flow rate through the pump. Now, I tell you lubrication of the centrifugal pump. Lubricants are used in the pump to minimize or eliminate the friction. Reduce abrasive wear. Protect surface from corrosive substance. Absorb and transfer heat. Contamination control that is prevention of dirt and wear debris damage. There are various types of lubricants used in the pump, like low viscosity oil. It is used for low load and higher speed application, such as SS68 means servo system 68. Oil viscosity is 68 centistokes at 40 degrees Celsius. Next, high viscosity oil. It is used in low speed and heavy load application, such as SS320. Servo Mesh SP320 SP320 oil is AP oil, that is extreme pressure oil, which is manufactured with sulfur and phosphorus chemicals. Next Servo Cycle C460 oil, it is used for high temperature application. Next Grease Servo Gem 2, Lethan 2. It is ordinary grease and can work effectively up to 120 degrees Celsius. Next servo gem AP2, Lethan AP2. This grease is used in extreme pressure application. Next, grease HTXX. Lethan flux which is used in high temperature above 120 degrees Celsius application. Note. Servo system 320 means viscosity of oil at 40 degrees Celsius is 320 centistokes and also at 100 degrees Celsius 54.6 centistokes. Like servo system 220 oil viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius is 39 centistokes. Now, disassembly of centrifugal pump. The following procedure of the disassembly of the pump. Get the permit for the pump. Contact area operator to ensure the energized the motor and pump suction and discharge valve to be isolated and liquid drain properly. Check the motor whether electrically isolated by kick starting the pump. Take drawing of the pump and select the proper tools. B. Remove the coupling guard and measure the DBSA, means distance between shaft end, and note down. Remove the coupling, flushing, jacket cooling, quenching lines. Lock the mechanical seal. Drain the bearing lub oil. Lost the casing bolts. Pull out the pump from casing carefully. Lost the impeller lock nut and remove the impeller. Dismantle the impeller back plate and remove the mechanical C with sleeve. Remove the shaft hub and key from the pump shaft. Remove bearing deflector. Remove bearing cover plate and pull out shaft with bearing from bearing housing. Remove bearing lock nut and lock washer. Remove bearing from the shaft. Clean the all parts of the pump. Dismantle the mechanical seal carefully and inspect the mating ring, RH packing, sleeve, spring. These are the whole steps of disassembly of the centrifugal pump. Now, steps involved in the assembly of the centrifugal pump. There are following steps as follows. Get the spares which are to be replaced and check it matching properly. Assembly the mechanical seal to sleeve. Lock the mechanical seal. Fix the bearing on the shaft and lock with the lock washer and lock nut. Box up shaft with bearing in the bearing housing. Fix bearing cover plate and bearing deflector. Fix the key, shaft hub, mechanical seal with the sleeve. Box up impeller back plate. Fix impeller on the shaft with impeller key and tight the impeller lock nut. 
Box up the impeller into the casing carefully and tight the casing bolts. Box up the flushing, jacket cooling, quenching lines. Check the DBSA and couple the pump to motor. Check the alignment. If it is not okay then alignment to be done. Fill the lube oil in the bearing housing. Check the impeller touch the casing by manually rotating the shaft. Fix the coupling guard. After that inform the area operator. If there is no any error then close the permit. Now, I tell you about the procedure involved in the starting of the centrifugal pump. Before starting the pump we have to check the following. Free rotation of the pump. Oil level in the bearing housing. Priming of the pump. Valve on delivery side is closed. Cooling water flow is on. Flush and quench to mechanical seal is on. After starting the pump we have to check the following. Once pump picks up speed, open the discharge valve slowly. Check whether pump is running smoothly. Check vibration and temperature. Check head and flow rate. These are the whole steps involved in the starting of the centrifugal pump. That's all about the centrifugal pump and the points related to it. Thanks for watching. I hope you understand well. If you have any doubt then tell me in the comment section. Thank you. Have a nice day.